I'm working on the further drawing exercises from on the parabola uh, from a book of curves by E.H. Lockwood. Uh, drawing exercise one, draw any two lines and mark on each a series of points at equal intervals. The intervals of the second line need not be equal to those of the first. Call the points on the first line A1, A2, A3, etc. and those on the second line B1, B2, B3, etc. Join A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3, etc. The envelope of these lines will be a parabola. So let's look at that with, uh, uh, with GX Web. Okay, so we're going to have um, two line segments. Um, let's let's do them like this. There's one A, B, A, C, D. They're not necessarily the same length, and they don't necessarily intersect. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take um, a series sequence of points that move along this uh, line. The, Location T and location T. And that is we get T. So as we um, as T moves, uh, we can see how that line, the entire family of lines. So we're going to look at the envelope uh, that that uh, family of lines uh, creates, the, the curve to which the entire family is tangent we can use the uh, envelope command and we need to tell it what's the envelope with respect to with respect to t and there is the curve uh, if we move this point around we can see how that's going to vary but the story is that that is going to be um, a piece of a parabola well is it um, let's have a look at the equation of that curve. Now, we haven't actually specified what the, where these points are, so we're not going to get much sense of a, an equation if we don't um, firm up a bit more about this drawing. So let me do that. Um, I could put the origin anywhere I want. The origin, in fact, is there. Uh, but let's just make point C the origin. And notice that making the origin actually moved the axes rather than anything else. Um, and now I'm going to make point D. Um, I'll just use X, not Y, not. That's the default that's coming up. Uh, X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And so I'd now like to, now I should be able to get something coherent, at least uh, if uh, perhaps a little bit complicated uh, for the equation of that curve. Um, so it, it, it'll take uh, potentially take Jake's web a, few, uh, a little bit of time to uh, sort out the equation. It's trying to get it as simple as it can. Uh, now, as simple as it can is not all that simple, but we can take a look and see what it looks like. Uh, Notice the small the the small x not y not x one y one etc are all just coefficients. The actual um, variables of the, the capital x and y. So we'll see there's a y squared in all of these the first lot here. And then there's a y a set of y terms. Um, there's a constant term uh, in the middle there, and here's. Um, across across uh, term and x y x y x y a whole bunch of those and an x squared term so it's a quadratic um, that that means it's a conic section but there's nothing really telling us whether it's an an ellipse or a parabola however we can look at this expression and say well life would be simpler. If this coefficient was zero, it would be simpler. If this coefficient was zero, but look, this is the simplest number. So let's just examine what it would take um, to make this. Now, I'm wanting to select that end coefficient there. Well, let me see if I can do it uh, easily. Oof. So I want to grab this coefficient. Let me just put my cursor at the end and move forward. There we go. Um, I've grabbed that coefficient. Now, 
there's a little bit of a, a trick here. If I just do copy, watch what happens. If I copy there and just paste it in uh, here to sort of see what we've got, it's captured the whole thing. And that's not what I wanted. Um, so I could do control A and delete to get rid of that. What I wanted was this just last bit. Well, it turns out if I'm at my keyboard here, I can do control C and that will copy just what's selected. So control C um, and then control V, it will paste it in. And we've just got the bit I was wanting to examine. Um, well, if I press, if I just enter that expression, uh, James Webb will do a, a bit of simplification um, on what we input. And in this case, it's um, uh, identified that that was a perfect square and, and presented it as, as the perfect square. So the circumstances under which this is zero are, are quite easy. Um, uh, y1 would have to be equal to y0 plus y2. Well, let's have a look at what happens if we do that. Let's just uh, change this to be, instead of y1, we'll change it to be y0. The square brackets are a way of entering the subscript. Uh, web uh, plus y2. OK, so we now have a different pair of lines, of course. Um, but uh, let me just uh, uh, take a look at the, the equation again. Uh, so now if we look at it, we've got our y squareds. <clears throat> um, the x squared term, of course, has gone away because that's what we that's why we chose y0 plus y2. But look, the xy term has also gone away. And this thing now is clearly the equation of a, a parabola aligned in the direction of the x-axis. Now, I did change the model um, by, uh, I changed the lines by uh, setting those, uh, uh, those, the y0 plus, the y1 to be this y0 plus y2. But remember, I only used one degree of, uh, two degrees of freedom of rigid body motion I placed this uh, pair of lines at the origin. Um, I could have also rotated them. And I would, uh, if you think about it, I could rotate those original pairs of lines in such a way that the parabola uh, lined up, that the, the um, y1 is equal to y0 plus y2. Um, how would I do that? Well, just look at the, uh, uh, let's join the centers of these two. Uh, lines of AD and BC. And we can see that this line that joins the centers um, is aligned with the axis of the parabola. Um, let me just look at that slope of GH in this circumstance. As zero. So um, here's how to get <laughs> given a pair of uh, lines arbitrarily, arbitrary lines, uh, without doing what I did, which blatantly changed the problem. I, I could still get them aligned with the x axis just by rotation. And the rotation would be the one that took um, uh, the centers of uh, B, C, and A, D um, onto. Uh, a horizontal line. And so uh, I would claim here that we've shown um, that it, what Lockwood tells us that this is a piece of a parabola uh, is in fact true.